when we lose, we create. And I, I was taught that as a really young child. I lost my mom to cancer when I was 18. And when she died, I went to this piano um, over here and started writing. I, I feel like making art, you know, through loss or any any type of trial or tribulation is is like a lifeline to be able to connect to others, right? So I, I really hope that this music video and the song um, feels like a lifeline out to people. My friend JD died. Uh, he, I went to college with him. We went to Amda together and studied musical theater. And um, I, I was beyond shocked. I went to see our, our mutual friend in his art exhibit. His name is Sean Fader. And he's this incredible queer artist. And I saw him, it was like pouring rain. I was so inspired by his work and I drove home and I immediately came upstairs here into my studio and laid down thunder within like an hour. I knew exactly what it was about. I was like, this is a song for JD. He was so brave and he taught me what it meant to be brave and to be, you know, true to oneself. And so from a lyrical standpoint, that's what it's about. It's just, you know, really believing in yourself. It was at that point that I had this vision of the music video. JD was a drag queen back in our days at Amda, and so he would perform at the tunnel. I was like, okay, this music video, I just like want there to be someone dressed in drag. I, I want to tell a, a story about a queer artist, and I really wanted to star a, a queer artist. Sam was in my vision of, of making this music video. Like, I, I just like pictured him. So I contacted him, I was like, would you not only dress in drag, but also dance by yourself? and like be in this music video and he was like absolutely and i was like okay let's do it getting to do this music video almost felt like an exorcism in the sense that i got a chance to dance for the first time in years without apologizing for my femininity my masculinity my power and i think that's because jd was with us I, I i truly do and i also owe it to jackie's writing and her lyrics and feeling safe with her in that space I picked him up in a car with our masks on, and it was just, from the moment we parked the car, I started shooting, and it was, we just like went. Like it was, we didn't stop, and it really did feel um, very magical and very serendipitous. It felt kismet. J Jackie, what was the experience like for you of having COVID, uh, both physically and, and mentally? My husband had it for like about a week. And then I had a cough for like two weeks. And then I thought I was getting better. And then it hit me like a ton of bricks. I was out like burning lungs, fever, couldn't break. And I was sick for like months. Since having it, I, I feel slightly alien. Like, I don't know if that, like, I feel like I've had something that, yes, now so many people have had, um, but it feels a little bit foreign. Idea that when we lose, we create. And I think the thing we lost this time around with this pandemic is community. A sense of being together, cheering each other on, creating in the same room and healing together. Creating with Jackie was such a, was such a reminder of how important community is. This song specifically is an anthem for that, not only in a pandemic, but for all those little, I'm making it personal, but all those kids that are locked in their rooms hiding because they feel like they're not gonna be accepted in the world. The thing that JD stood for, you know, yeah. it's, it's an anthem to, to remember that your magic is inside in the deepest, most shameful parts of you, there's gold. You know, I'm a recovering alcoholic, drug addict, 
uh, anorexic bulimic. Like I've walked through some pretty awful things because of the trauma I experienced as a kid. And if I can stand on my own two feet and put on some makeup and some heels and dance my ass off and feel good about it, no can you. I really relied on anthems growing up and I those were from strong, kick-ass women. So my first album was Madonna's Immaculate Collection. You know, that was, that was my Bible. Um, that was my gospel. And then I, I graduated to, you know, Helen Reddy and Tina Turner and Karen Carpenter and Cher. And when I came out, when I was really struggling with my sexuality, I, I found Rufus Wainwright, who has been in my heart and soul for years. Um, because he's just so brave and, and so talented and also so human uh, and authentic with his own journey, you know, and struggles. Four of our histories of music is like, that's kind of what connects you to the people that are important in your life and like what gives you that experience of, uh, of, of like being able to escape, being able to transcend, like being able to, um, so we want to we wanna kind of bridge that, make that really uh, concrete, that gap. If we, if we have these kids that are in their bedroom, Sam, like right now, like isolated and suffering, like we don't just want them to like see a cool video. We want to also be able to say like, this is what therapy is, this is, what, this is where to find it. My husband knows it, everyone in my life knows it. The, the reason why I wake up in the morning is for music. And so for me, I have to write every day. I always have to be working on my, my art. And that is my, my survival mechanism. It's, it's my means of sanity. Writing the song was cathartic and what I needed to do for JD 